Mm -hmm. Oh, how they tell our story, let it echo far and wide, make them hear you. It was only a war policy of the government to declare the slaves of the South to be free, knowing that the whole power of the South laid in the possession of the slaves. But I want you to understand that we would not have become free had we not armed ourselves and fought out our independence. If I had been a slave, I would have been most troublesome and not have been conquered or by threat or punishment. I would not have worked and no one would have dared come near me. I would have struggled for life or death and would have thrown fire and sword between them. <coughs> I know you have been good, only too good. I was told by a friend of mine that when owned by a man and put to work in the field, he laid quietly down and just looked out for the overseer to come along when he pretended to work very hard. But he confessed to me that he had never done a fair day's work for his master. And so he was right. <coughs> so I would have done the same. And all of you ought to have done the same. People say that you are too lazy to work, that you have no intelligence to get on for yourselves without being guided and driven by overseers. I say it's a lie, and a blasphemous lie. And I will prove it to be so. I'm going to tell you now what you are worth. As you know, Christopher Columbus landed here in 1492. They came here only with the purpose to dig gold, gather precious pearls, diamonds, and all sorts of jewels, only for the proud aristocracy of the white Spaniards and Portuguese, to adorn their persons, to have brooches for their breasts, earrings for their ears, bracelets for their ankles, and rings for their limbs and fingers. They found here Indians whom they obliged to dig and work and slave for them, but they found out that they died way too fast and cannot stand the work. In the course of time, they had taken some blacks along with them and put them to work. They could not stand it. And yet the whites say they are superior race, though they could not stand it. The work was so profitable, <coughs> which those poor backs did, that in the year 1502, Charles V gave permission to import into America year, yearly 4,000 blacks. The profit of these slaves was so immense that afterwards even the Virgin Queen of England and James II took part in the slave trade and were accumulating great wealth for the treasury of their government. And so you always have been the means to riches. So I will come to the main purpose for which I have come to see you. As before, the whole South depended on you. Now, the whole country will depend on you. I give you advice how to get along, get up a community, and get all the lands you can if you cannot get any single. Grow as much vegetables, etc., as you want for your families, and on the other part of the land, cultivate rice and cotton. Now, for instance, an acre of, will grow you a crop of cotton of $90. Now a land of 10 acres will bring $900 every year. If you cannot get the land all yourself, the community can. And so you can divide the profit. Now you understand. I want you to be the producers of this country. It is the wish of the government for you to be, do so. We will send friends to you who will further instruct you on how to become the end of our wishes. You see that by so adhering to our views, you will become a wealthy and powerful population. Now, I look around me and I notice a barefoot man covered with rags and dirt. Now I ask, what is this man doing and whom is he working? I hear that he works for that farmer for 30 cents a day. I tell you, that must not be. That will be cursed slavery all over again and I will not have it. The government will not have it. The government shall hear about it, because I will tell the government. I tell you, slavery is over and will never return again. We now have 200,000 of our men, well drilled, well drilled in arms and used to warfare. And I tell you, 
slavery will never come back again. If you are determined, it will not return again. Now, go to work, and in a short time I will see you again, and other friends will come to show you how to begin. Have your fields in good order and well tilled and planted. When I pass the fields and I see a well planted and well cared for, then I may be sure from the look of it that it belongs to a free Negro. And when I see a field thinly planted and little cared for, then I may think it belongs to some man who works it with slaves. Make them hear you.